Thank you. And this is Azure Fundamentals for Food Colic get, Getting Started with Azure. I hope for at least some of you that uh, if it comes to volition. Uh, uh, let's uh, talk about what we're going to do today. We're going to describe some basic concepts and we're going to do a little bit of the basic automation and orchestration tasks with Azure. Uh, we're going to talk about the how you deploy resilient and scalable solutions as well. And that's sort of going to lead us into a more advanced course. We have to be you know, modest with what we can do in an hour. In particular, I'm not going to talk about security or firewalls, but hopefully this course will get you ready for a follow-up course where we'll focus on deploying security into Azure. So uh, let's talk uh, about how to access Azure, go through the key uh, terminologies. I want to drill down a bit on routing. It can be a bit of a complex subject. And then uh, talk about resilience and scale. So how do you get started? Well, most people get started uh, by logging into the Azure portal. And we're going to see quite a bit of this uh, today. And one of the mistakes people make that I want to uh, be sure people on this call avoid is you st spend all your time in the Azure portal because it is a comprehensive management platform and you don't learn the automation tools and you end up with a little bit uh, of saving of time at the beginning, losing a lot of time and power as you move forward. So in this call, we're going to talk about automation. One of my favorite tools is called the Azure CLI. So it's free, easy to install. And what it uh, basically does is it crafts and sends API calls to Azure. Everything is pretty much done in Azure with API calls. And as a matter of fact, if you could use this to reverse engineer the API uh, and, uh, by just putting the debug command. Uh, apply in the Azure uh, CLI. And also, it's got some nice built in help here. So you can see that there's a network subcommand. NSGs we'll talk about, those are network security groups. And how you create it, what are the options? You just keep using the minus H option. Uh, you have a few output options. By default, the output is all going to be JSON, which is a little hard to read. So I prefer the table output unless you want to see the JSON for some reason. So we'll see lots of examples of that today. Very easy to install. You just install by whatever method, you know, depending upon Linux or Windows or Mac. And then you type AZ login. And if you're, say, on Windows, it's going to automatically open a browser and you'll log in to your Azure account, and it will immediately set up the authentication. Otherwise, if you're like running a remote session to a Linux box, it will generate a key and show you a URL. You go to that URL, log into your Azure account, and type in that key, and that's sufficient to make the connection. And uh, after you've done this, the Azure CLI has learned your credentials, and you never have to type Azure login again. You can just start doing your Azure commands whenever you're on that uh, system. The other thing that you're going to hear a lot about, and I'll give some simple examples of the uh, ARM templates. ARM stands for Azure Resource Manager, which is sort of the whole infrastructure at a high level is the Azure Resource Manager that you're interacting with. ARM templates are written in JSON. They are also the API calls. Uh, and uh, they consist, however, not just of the API calls, but they can have parameters, which are basically input arguments, variables which you derive from these parameters typically, or you could use things like generate random strings for to put on to use the names of resources and so forth. And they have some very simple conditionals. They're not great for conditionals. That's why you would probably do something like Python or 
uh, or some kind of other scripting if you're getting fancy. Uh, the ARM templates are uh, can be deployed in the portal, or there's an API call to deploy a template. And a matter of fact, uh, the Azure uh, CLI can deploy a template because it crafts uh, and uh, deploys uh, uh, API calls. And you can see, uh, we'll talk about uh, the uh, resource group in a minute. Here's a template. And if you, you can either put the parameters into the CLI command, or you can uh, have them to have default values. But if they don't have default values and you haven't put them in the command, like this name prefix, when you run the CLI, it will ask you for the value of the parameter. Then it will uh, generate the CLI. Uh, then it will uh, generate uh, a version of the uh, template that is uh, hardwired with that value and send it to Azure. Now, since everything's done with APIs, these are really just two methods of delivering APIs. There's also stuff in PowerShell. I'm going to stay away from PowerShell because to sort of make this too broad. There's something I'll show you called the Azure Cloud Shell. Sounds very, very uh, ephemeral. Uh, uh, but obviously, if you're into writing, writing Python scripts to do your API stuff, that's great. That gives you the more complex logic. There are Ansible modules for Azure. You could use Postman. You could use Terraform templates instead of ARM templates, which uh, I, I know that Paul is very much into. Also, we've got a lot in SecureX, not built into it, but we've got it on GitHub. So you could start to uh, craft, if you're, it's, not, it's not easy, but you could craft workflows in SecureX that make these Azure calls and uh, you know, create resources and so forth. So pretty much your favorite way of doing API, you can apply to uh, Azure. 